Very good evening and welcome to another episode of Brett's All-Time Radio Show and welcome to sunny Spain yet again. It's another day in paradise, however, we're not supposed to be here really. We've had a busy day, we've been doing lots of shopping and just replenishing the cupboards because as you can imagine, we'd, well, we'd, we've gone through everything and sorted it all out and packed up and we were on our way home, but we've got ourselves sorted again. The plan is that we're going to do another trip to Cartagena this week, so you better see all these things, and also I think we're going to do another little trip to the karting track, just to see if I can beat my two boys, who well and truly thrash me at the last trip that we made. So we're looking forward to that, and we'll obviously, if you check out our social media, we'll keep you well in the loop of all the stuff we're getting up to. I'm Brett, I'm your host for our Nighttime Podcast. Welcome to another episode. I've got Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. They're all called Brett's Old Time Radio Show. If you could follow me, check it out. I'd appreciate it. We've got a supporter page at patreon.com forward slash Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Time now for our latest adventure with Rocky Jordan. We're heading for the Hotel Tambourine in Egypt. And this is an episode. First broadcast on the 14th of August, 1949. It's called Cairo Vendetta. Buy wisely. Buy for flavor. By Del Monte. Del Monte, the brand you trust for flavor in so many good foods. Time now for Rocky Jordan, brought to you today by Del Monte Tomato Products. Not far from the mosque Sultan Hassan in Cairo stands the Café Tambourine, run by Rocky Jordan. The Café Tambourine, crowded with forgotten men, alive with the babble of many languages. For this is Cairo, where modern adventure and intrigue unfold against the backdrop of antiquity. Del Monte Foods presents Rocky Jordan and this week's story, Cairo Vendetta. Cairo is a city of strange contrasts in many ways. The blinding heat, the noise and confusion of the day, compare that to the cool, restful quiet of the night. Well, on this particular night, I was in my room up over the tambourine, about as sound asleep as a man can get. But it couldn't stay that way. A rock clattered across the floor, and all at once I was wide awake, piling out of bed, grabbing my slippers, and on my way across the room to the shattered window. Jordan Bay! Wake up, Jordan Bay! Wake up! Who is that down there? Shiva. You make a habit of smashing people's windows, Shiva? I could not wake you up any other way. Well, I'm awake now. What's this all about? I must see you. Please, Effendi. It is most important. You can tell me from there. No, I cannot. Come down, Jordan Bay. Come down quickly. Oh, all right, I'll come down. This had better be good. I cut on a light, got dressed as quick as I could, and hurried down through the cafe. Shiva wasn't the usual type of boy that makes trouble around the native quarter. He sold papers not far from the tambourine, and he and I had become good friends. So just what he was up to had me wondering. He was waiting at the door. I have to see you, Jordan. All right, Sheba. First we talk about that broken window. No, there is little time. Please, we must hurry. How do we get it clear? What are you talking about? You must come with me. Who says so? This way, Jordan Bay. I will show you. Shiva was off and running excitedly down the deserted dark street with me after him. He led me past the mosque and under the minaret tower and turned down the narrow Sharia Yuran. Not far on, he suddenly stopped, pointed to the black end of an alley and drew away. I moved slowly back beneath the overhanging buildings. A groan came from somewhere. I stiffened until my eyes made out a heap lying near a garbage can. As I bent over, it moved. I saw then it was a man in native dress, badly beaten and suffering from knife wounds. I dragged him to where a thin moonbeam could play on his face. He was the last man I ever thought I'd find like this. Captain Sam Sabaya of the Cairo Police Force. It was easier to get Sam back to the tambourine than to look around for help. So Sheba gave me a hand, and a couple of minutes later, we were back at the cafe. And after forcing a hot cup of coffee down Sam's throat, I bathed his cuts and bruises and did what I could till he came out of it. Thank you. All right, Sam. Jordan. You're okay. 
Jordan, you... You have my gratitude. How is it now? Mm, all right. I I can make it quite well. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm right there. I'm going to buzz the hospital and get somebody over here. Jordan, that will not be necessary. Think again, Sam. You've been wounded. You will call no one. Do you understand? No one. Hey, look, you're not thinking straight. I am fully aware of what I am saying. Now forget this. Forget everything. What are you driving at? Listen, Sam, what's this all about? What happened to you? Jordan, you will keep out of this. It is none of your affair. Already you have seen too much. Sam, I'm just trying to help you. If you will help me, you will help me get up and permit me to go my way. All right. Have it your own way. Yes. Now, Jordan, please, think no more of this. Oh, sure, Sam. I'm just thinking of something you once told me. There is no time. An old saying of your people. He is your brother who shares your disaster. Yes, and I am reminded of a saying from the book of your people, Jordan. Yeah? Only the fool comes meddling. You sure make it clear enough. Jordan, for my sake and yours, keep out of this. Know nothing and say nothing to anyone. Well, if that's the way Sam wanted it, fine. It was his affair, and he could keep it that way. I'm not the kind that goes sticking his nose in other people's business, especially around Cairo. But in spite of all that philosophy, I found myself asking the little newsboy questions. I sell the papers tonight in the British sector, Effendi. Why are you up this time of night? It is a long way to my home. I live only a few doors beyond where you found him. All right, uh, tell me exactly what happened. I-, I passed the captain walking down the dark street... I knew he was your friend, that that he comes often to your cafe. Yeah, sure. Go on. It is very strange, Effendi. Just as I heard the cock crow, there were footsteps and I turned. Two figures came out of the alley and they grabbed the captain and began beating and kicking him. What did they look like? It was dark and I could not tell. Besides, I saw the flash of a stiletto. I was afraid. Let's just say you were smart. All right, what next? I hid in the shadows as they dragged him into the alley and threw him to the ground. I did not know what else to do, so as soon as they were gone, I came for you. Shiva, you say you heard a cock crow? Yes, but I cannot understand. I, I never heard one there before. Does it make sense? Cock doesn't grow at night. I do not know. Jordan Bay, about the window, I, I am most sorry. Oh, forget it, son. You better run along home now. As you wish, it, then. Oh, just one thing, Shiva. Like Sam said... Keep it to yourself, right? That is my promise, Jordan Bay. Good night. Getting Sabaya out of my mind wasn't easy. So the next day, I checked the morning and afternoon papers, but there was no mention of the affair. Even with Imoasian's call at sundown, I'd heard nothing from him. I knew he said to keep out of it, but I couldn't. So I put in a call for him at headquarters. For whom are you calling? Hello, Greco. Put Sabaya on, huh? Sabaya is not here. Who is this speaking? You know me, Greco. Rocky Jordan. So, state your business, Mr. Jordan. I said put Sabaya on. Where is he? That is not my concern. You better make it your concern before they have you pound on the Bulak beat again. Mr. Jordan, it might interest you to know that there has been a change in the police department. What are you talking about? Sam Sabaya has turned in his badge. His what? Do I not make myself clear? Sabaya is no longer with the Cairo Police Department. But, but why? Why, Sergeant Greco? A correction, Mr. Jordan. It is now uh, Captain Greco. Well, that did it. From where I stood, it added up to too much trouble. Sam sure wasn't getting any help from the now Captain Greco. So without waiting around any longer, I decided to look him up. He lived in a modest old white house not far up from the Nile. That's where I went first. I knocked a couple of times with no answer, so I scratched around the window. The shade was partly drawn, and I couldn't see much. I was about to try the door again. Um, why does the Anglaise peer in at the window? Huh? Huh? Oh, uh, who are you, lady? I am the neighbor at the next house. Well, I'm looking for Sam Sabaya. You know anything about him? Oh, oh yes. Such a noble bay. So kind to his family. Yeah, yeah, but where is he? He is no longer here. Not for several days. What about the rest, the family? 
Oh, yes, but one wife, sir. Such a fine woman. Never have I seen such needlework. Uh, has she been around? Uh, she does not live here either. Very suddenly she left with the children. Well, the furniture's there. Somebody else moved in? No. No, that is the furniture of the Sabayas. It is there, but they are gone. Gone where? I would be most happy to tell you, sir, but I do not know. I thanked the lady and went back across the court and out the gate. I'd gone maybe three steps farther when an interesting mixture of garlic and perfume sidled up and stood in my way. Uh, would the senor permit me a moment? Not if it can wait. It is possible that you are a friend of the Sabayas. Why are you asking? Well, you see, senor, I am a <clears throat> bill collector. Unfortunately, they owe me some money, and I must collect it. Well, lots of luck. Uh, uh, please, please. You do not like me, do you? Well, that is the fate of my profession. But one must earn money to live. Just what do you want? It is only that if you know of the Sabayas... And give I... it up, mister. I don't know a thing. Uh, thank you. Thank you so kindly. He said he was a bill collector, but I knew better. They don't send Italians to collect from native Egyptians. Anyhow, he lacked all the earmarks. His fingers were manicured, he was in continental dress, and the reek of perfume about clinched the deal. So I figured maybe I ought to do a little tailing on the guy. That wasn't hard. He turned along the almost deserted Sharia El Minya, seeming to go nowhere. Then suddenly I knew somebody was behind me. But before I could make a move, the second guy had pressed me up against the wall. Senor Jordan, for this stiletto will be slipped gently into the nap of your neck. Where did you pick up my name? It does not matter. What does? You were following my friend. I got a reason. My friend does not like to be followed. He finds it disturbing. That all in your mind? A matter that should not concern you. A man you should forget. Meaning who? Sabaya. Yeah? You ask too many questions about him. You and your friend, the ones who worked Sam over? Persist in your concern, Senor Jordan. And the cock will crow again. What does that mean? You do not want to know. You would not like it. I don't like it already. Then I will leave you with one extra warning, senor. This will... <laughs> Next time I will wear a shoe with a heel of metal. It breaks the toes. Arrivederci. Monte Foods is presenting tonight's adventure with Rocky Jordan. Let's pay a little call on the Cronins. It's along about dinner time, and Don is just coming in from the yard. Let's listen. Hi, honey. Say, I'm as hungry as that bear people are supposed to be as hungry as. Uh, what's for dinner? Oh, it's corned beef hash tonight, dear. See? Mm -hmm. I fixed it up special. Just the way you like it. Well, that's for me. Corned beef hash and plenty of catsup. That catsup with the special flavor I like so much. That's Del Monte catsup. I just wouldn't be without it. You can't beat it for flavor. Oh, Mrs. Cronin, you're so right. Friends, it's a fact. You just can't beat Del Monte catsup for real, satisfying flavor. Just pour some over hash or meatloaf or chops. You'll find that appetizing tomato flavor makes you want to come back for more. Mm -mm. Yes, ma'am, there'll be plenty of calls for second helpings when you use Del Monte tomato catsup. It's tangy, it's lively, it's rich. It's tomato flavor at its best. Look for Del Monte at your grocer's. You'll be surprised at its low cost. Try Del Monte catsup. Then, just like Mrs. Cronin, you'll be saying... You just can't beat Del Monte catsup for real tomato flavor. <laughs> Now we return you to Cairo and tonight's adventure with Rocky Jordan, Cairo Vendetta. I hadn't forgotten Sam Sabaya's warning to me to keep out of his trouble, whatever it was. But when a couple of guys, one waving a stiletto, crossed my path with a similar warning, I decided to poke around some more. Sam had been wounded by a stiletto. The two guys I'd mixed with were Italians, 
So that sent me down to the Italian sector. I figured Giuliano Bassetti, who edited the Italian language newspaper in Cairo, might be of some help. I spotted him in a coffee shop and went over to his table. Well, well, Signor Jordan. Uh, will you join me for coffee? I don't mind if I do, Mr. Bassetti. It's been a long time. Yes, indeed it has. Uh, servo, coffee, coffee for this uh, gentleman here, please. Uh, I can yeah. use some. Uh, what brings you to the Italian sector, my friend? Oh, looking for new faces, you might say. I hear there are a few around. Uh, they come and go. With an eye out for the next edition, I guess you'd be the first to notice. Mm, perhaps it is as you say. Ah, here is your coffee, Signor Jordan. Oh, nice. As it happens, there is a new element in our sector most recently. Mm -hmm. Where they come from? Oh, most of them from the home country. Why certain of them come is hard to say. Sounds like there's been trouble. I wish I could deny it. Yes, there have been numerous incidents of violence in the sector. And deeply disturbing. Well, makes good news, doesn't it? Yes, true, but what is good for my paper is not always the best for my people. Any idea what's behind all this? Perhaps. The incident seemed to follow a pattern. Monday night, a man dies by the stiletto. Another Tuesday night, in the same manner. Knifing, shootings, beatings, and always certain key figures in the community. You said you might have some idea what's behind it. I'm listening. Uh, the Camorra. Let's have that again. The Camorra. You never heard of it? No. A secret society once powerful in southern Italy that has since spread to Italian communities throughout the world. You have heard of the Mafia? Yeah. The Camorra is similar, but it was thought to have died out some years ago. Oh, sort of a rebirth, huh? Yes, I'm afraid so. They are an evil clan, always seeking to gain their objectives by violence. You know, Bassetti, I think I know someone who's tussling with him right now. Hmm? His name? Not for publication. Oh, I understand. Mr. Jordan? Hmm? I pity him, whoever he is. Well, that cleared up something. I knew what was after Sam, anyway. Step number two was finding Sam and forcing my help upon him, whether he wanted it or not. I called Greco. He gave me nothing. I tried the police commissioner and a lot of Sam's relatives. Nobody knew a thing. And all the time that I was checking through Cairo to get a lead on Sam's whereabouts, what Shiva had told me about the cock that crowed at night rang through my mind. I couldn't fit it in, and I couldn't get that lead to Sam. Then I started thinking about Sam's wife and his family. He had covered up the big things real well, but how about some of the little items? That sent me on a new tack. I found out their laundry and called the manager and got him out of bed. Uh, yes, hello. Hey, what kind of a laundry do you run, anyway? What? Who is this? Never mind who this is. I'm calling for Mrs. Sam Sabaya. You treat all your customers like that? I do not understand. Don't you realize she's got four kids, two of them babies? What do you think they're going to wear? But please, I... Now, where's that laundry she told you to send on out to Giza? Giza? Oh, no, she said to send it to her cousin's country home in Mugatim. Okay, thanks. Wait, who is this? I wasn't to tell. Wait! Mukatem is a suburb high above the Nile to the south of Cairo. I made it there in less than an hour. And a little later, I'd found the house off in the hills a little way out of town. As I went in at the court, I saw a dim light from inside, so I knew somebody was there. They kept knocking. He's Markai. Miss Sabaya, I've got to talk to you. Oh, go away, please. I've retired for the night. But you remember me, Rocky Jordan? It's about Sam. He's not here. You know Sam's in trouble, Mrs. Sabaya. Yes, I know. I know. You must not be here. My husband would not want it. I've got to help him, whether he wants it or not. You've got to believe that. Oh, very well. Come inside, Mr. Jordan. But only for a moment. The uh, children here with you? They are here and safe. Now, what is the news of my husband? A couple of Italians are looking for him. That is what I feared. Where is he? I do not know. All I know is that he is alone. It is his wish, and his wife does not question. It's the Camorra, isn't it, Mrs. Zabaya? 
Then you know. It has become more, I guess. But even more than that. I'd like to hear more about it. I do not know if I should tell you. Look, Mrs. Sabaya, I can figure there's a lot more to this than shows. The Camorra alone is a police problem. Why did Sam turn in his badge and quit the force? Because it is also a personal problem. Three years ago, my husband sent to prison the Baron Silvera for some act of violence in Cairo. Who's Silvera? He was the leader of the Camorra for the Italian Somaliland. His capture at the time seemed to put an end to the movement. Now Silvera's free with a vendetta against Sam, huh? Yes, Mr. Jordan. Silvera is a man of vengeance. He has sworn death to my husband, and we fear some revenge against the family. That is why my husband wished us to be hidden here. That still doesn't explain why he turned in his badge. Sam's not the kind to quit when things get tough. My husband requested a temporary release so that he might go after Silvera in his own way, unrestricted by his office. Oh, I've got it now. But what of my husband? Baron Silvera's vengeance knows no bounds. Indeed, you know me well, Signora Sabaya. Silvera! At last. Good evening, Signor Jordan. We ever met before. Recall? Yeah. You see, you're using a gun to collect bills now, Silvera. Shall we say, yeah? Uh, I've come to pay a debt. Where's your friend who likes to break toes? A Chiano. Where he always is. But how did you find this place? My husband made certain we would not be found. Well, what could have been easier? We had only to follow the wily Senor Jordan. He did my work for me. Mr. Jordan... I'm sorry, Mrs. Sabaya. Looks like I've done plenty. And now Sabaya's family will lead him to us. But we... We know nothing of him. She's telling the truth, Silvera. <laughs> Perhaps. My plan is most simple. Already word has spread throughout Cairo. I am holding Senora Sabaya and her children hostages. Oh. I can take it from there. If Sabaya does not give himself up to me now, he will never see his family again. Well, he held us there in the room, and I had plenty of time to think about what I had done. And it didn't take long for Silvera's plan to pay off. The big hand of the clock on the wall hadn't gone halfway around before the phone rang. Ah, I, I will answer No, you. Signora, no. Let Jordan take up the phone. Uh. Jordan, I don't want... Hello? Who is this speaking? It's Rocky, Sam. Jordan, what are you doing there? Uh, it doesn't make a lot of difference now. Jordan, tell me quickly, is it true that the Camorra have my family? Yes. Silvera's here. Silvera? Then you have led him there. Jordan, I warned you. I begged you to keep out of this. Yeah, I know, Sam. Leave it to me to fix everything. You have ruined my plans. Now there's nothing for me to do but give myself into their hands. But Sam, there must be something. No, Jordan. Jordan, tell Silvera that I will be there as soon as possible. He'll be here. No. Oh, my poor husband. Let her and the children go, Silvera. <laughs> Indeed not. She will wait here with us. Uh, what happens then? Sabaya comes to me. Oh, no. Then I will have my vengeance in a most interesting manner at a most interesting moment. Well, we waited. Mrs. Sabaya, the four kids upstairs, Silvera and me waited for Sam to come. The Baron Silvera stood at the window, gazing out onto the courtyard through which Sam had to come wetting his lips and weighing his gun in his hand. Then we heard footsteps coming up the winding path and across the court. Finally, the door opened and Sam was standing before us. I've come, Silvera. Sam, my husband... You will not approach him. Do as he commands, my wife. And may Allah be with you always. Sam, I know it's my doing. I should have had more sense. I should have realized... Be not disturbed, Jordan. He is a small man who considers not his brother's welfare. But, Sam... We are at peace, Jordan. Silvera... I ask only mercy for my family. Do with me what you will. To do with you what I will is my exact intention. I've thought of nothing else these past few years. Last night I failed. Tonight I shall not. Sabaya, the time is late. Now come. I will follow you into the courtyard. You first, Sabaya. 
They started, the two of them. Sabaya first, Silvera behind him, holding the gun. This was the moment, and somehow I knew it. The moment Silvera had waited for. Sabaya in his hands. It was my fault, and there was nothing I could do. <laughs> Suddenly, I heard the cock crow, crowing at night like it had once before. And I knew what it meant, and I knew it alone could save Sam. Sam, hit the floor! <laughs> Sam dropped and I moved in fast. My foot slammed into the small of Severa's back. Uh, Stumbled over Sabaya and rolled sprawling into the courtyard. Not here, I'm out of that shoot. Forget this thing, you're in there. Grab Silvera's gun, Sam. Jell is running. <laughs> Sam's one clean shot dropped the fleeing Chiano in his tracks. And all at once, Sam and all his family were safe. Silvera and Chiano were dead. <laughs> Del Monte Foods is presenting tonight's adventure with Rocky Jordan. It's a fact. American housewives have bought more cans of Del Monte tomato sauce than any other brand. Why? It's the flavor. The rich, spiced tomato flavor that's never been matched since Del Monte originated tomato sauce. Yes, for a whole generation, women have depended on Del Monte tomato sauce to add that taste-tempting extra flavor to low-cost meals. Here is what one of California's good cooks, Mrs. John Falkenrath of San Leandro, California, said. I'm an experimenter. Naturally, in 39 years of cooking, I've tried many sauces. So I speak from experience, and lots of it. Del Monte sauce has the true tomato flavor. And its fine, rich color makes any dish look extra good. What's more, it's dependable. Always good and always the same. Thank you, Mrs. Falkenrath. Yes, you can depend on Del Monte tomato sauce, just as you depend on all Del Monte foods. It's always good and always the same. The original tomato sauce. A secret combination of field-ripened tomatoes and fine seasonings that gives extra special flavor in cooking economical, everyday foods. Buy Del Monte tomato sauce next time you go shopping. Back now to Rocky Jordan. Well, with the death of Silvera and Chiano, it looked like the rebirth of the Camorra was ended. So after the smoke had cleared away, Sam's first thoughts were for his wife and kids back in the house. Now, that was no place for me, so I left after making a date to join him later at headquarters. Finally, I was sitting across from him at his desk as he enjoyed a hot cup of coffee in his usual way. So, Jordan, I think we need worry about the Camorra no more. Anyhow, not Silvera and his buddy. Family all right, Sam? Oh, yes. They are well and already back in Cairo. They and I wish to express our gratitude. Well, I got you into it, Sam. If you owe your life to anything, it's the crowing of the cock. And your ability to understand what it meant. Well, it wasn't hard to figure that Silvera wouldn't dirty his pretty fingernails with murder. He'd have his friend planted outside to do the work. And the crowing of the cock is the Camorra signal for the kill. I am not in... Oh, come in, Greco. I have here a list of all those known to have participated in the Camorra uprising. Oh, good, good, Greco. We will act at once. Jordan, if you will pardon me. Sure, sir. And me, Mr. Jordan. Oh, think nothing of it, Captain Greco. Uh, <clears throat> a correction, Mr. Jordan. It is once again Sergeant Greco. <laughs> For the finest in tomato flavor, enjoy the whole family of Del Monte tomato products. Del Monte catsup and chili sauce. Del Monte tomato sauce and canned tomatoes. And Del Monte tomato juice. Remember, buy wisely. Buy for flavor. Buy Del Monte. Del Monte, the brand you trust for flavor in so many good foods.
Rocky Jordan, written by Gomer Cool and Larry Roman, stars Jack Moyles in the title role and is directed and produced by Cliff Howell with original music composed and conducted by Richard Arant. Remember, you have a date next week at the Cafe Tambourine, run by Rocky Jordan. Same time, same station. And the story is The Gum Queen. Looking for a cool, luscious dessert? Serve your family tempting Del Monte crushed pineapple heaped on your favorite ice cream or sherbet. Oh, there's flavor. Flavor that's really super delicious. Del Monte crushed pineapple, the brand that puts flavor first. Larry Thor speaking. Rocky Jordan is presented over CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed our latest adventure with Rocky Jordan. And we'll be back tomorrow with them Tales of the Texas Rangers, going live from 5 p.m. GMT. You can email me on brett at tourdate.co.uk. I'd love to know your thoughts on our little show. And as I mentioned earlier, I've got a supporter page at patreon.com forward slash Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Thanks for listening. I'll be with you seven days a week, each and every week. And I'll see you tomorrow on Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Love you. Bye.